Archeplastida. So what is this Archeplastida all about? As the name says, Archae uh, means old. The Plastida is uh, organisms with plastids. So the name suggests that this is a group of organisms with very old or ancient plastids. So as you see that the Archeplastida is nothing but green plants, you know, with the uh, uh, chlorophyll not masked by any accessory pigments. So that is why it looks uh, appear green, you see. So the green plantae, uh, uh, the kingdom plantae is also called Archeplastida, you know, they both are synonyms, you see, or viridae plantae. It uh, uh, encompasses embryophyte and chlorophyte together called viridae plantae. So in strict sense, sense so stricto in Latin, Viridae plantae is used only for embryophytes and chlorophytes. So by the way, embryophyte is a land plant and uh, chlorophytes are green algae, right? So chlorophyte as such, including the chlorophytes together do not make one, uh, you know, one clade, right? So that is why it is a kind of a polyphyletic group, but embryophytes are not polyphyletic. All the land plants had one common ancestor, not shared with the algae, you see? So that we will come in a short while. So uh, this kingdom plantae has got uh, viride plantae plus bilifyta. So the bilifyta is the rhodophytes and glaucophytes. So rhodophyte is a red algae. As you can see in this image, the red color, rhodo, red, right? Rhodophytes and glaucophyte. So glaucophyte is also a kind of a, a unicellular algae which are not much studied. So the uh, you know the uh, peculiarity of this kingdom plantae is that it has got a chloroplast uh, which is surrounded by two membranes, only two membranes. I told you earlier protozoa has got a chloroplast with uh, three membranes while chromis have got four membranes. Three or four membranes for both of these uh, protozoa and chromis right? But for the plantae the membranes are less because there is no secondary endosymbiosis. So the entire kingdom plantae was uh, you know resulted because of the one primary endosymbiosis that happened uh, eons ago right primary endosymbiosis the product so the viridae plantae has got chlorophyll a and b not d uh, you know of course uh, the, uh, of uh, a and b are uh, the defining characteristic d could be the case for example the red algae has got d in addition to a and b right so not c though Embryophytes, the land plants, plus chlorophyte, the green algae, together makes the viridae plantae. And then the second one is bilifyta, rhodophyta, and glaucophyta. So, rhodophyta is a red algae that contains chlorophyll A and phycobili proteins. You know, while glaucophyta has got plastids, have got peptidoglycan cell wall. Again, there is a very interesting parallelism with the uh, bacteria you see so usually peptidoglycan is found only in bacterial cell wall but glaucophytes have got peptidoglycan in its cell wall interesting isn't it so the green plants of course are all uh, multicellular you know uh, rather i would say uh, mostly multicellular photoautotrophic cell walls made up of cellulose you know the green plants have got cellulose in it so if you look at the green plants in this uh, viridae plantae, you can see that most of the basal groups are all algae or chlorophytes. You know, so chlorophytes. These, uh, to, you know, all these uh, four uh, groups here: Prasinophyte, Chlorophyceae, uh, Triboxyphyceae, and Ulmophyceae. Together uh, is what uh, people referred as green algae. So as you can see that green algae with the prasinophytes in it is not monophyletic but if you remove the prasinophytes and you define that the green algae is only UTC clade that is Ulvophyceae, Triboxyphyceae and Chlorophyceae then yes it uh, you know these three groups together forms one clade so as you see the clades are natural groups you see in, in the nature this is what uh, you know any kind of classification has to be monophyletic think about your own family you know, so you're uh, uh, someone who is not related to you. Can you consider them as part of your close knit family, the kinship? No, right. So because ancestor descent is only a relationship in in biology as well as in, in relationships, right? In everyday language. So that is why 
natural any kind of natural group of classification uh, in in phylogeny it has to have uh, a clade right so unless it is a clade it is not natural right so streptophyte is a natural group because it forms a clade one common ancestor and all the descendants you see but if you define that uh, everything except embryophyte then no it doesn't form one clade that is used to be the so called green algae so green algae is not a monophyletic group you see so embryophyte is a land plant so the entire plants on the land what you can see uh, are embryophytes and uh, you know the, the embryophytes closest uh, i mean uh, the sister group you know the most recent common ancestor had been corae uh, carales you know cara Cara vulgaris, for example, Carales and Coleochetales. So these two groups are very similar to uh, the embryophytes rather than other green algae. You know, so these two algae, algae groups are uh, thought to be like an ancestor. Uh, you know, which is uh, quite similar to the ancestor that gave rise to the entire embryophytes. So uh, streptophytes include other than this Carales and Coleochetales. Zygnimatales and Clepsomidiales and uh, Chlorochybales. So these groups are not really studied uh, much. Carales, yes, but other than Carales, none of these groups have been studied really thoroughly, especially here in India. But for the, the algae concerned, the, especially the seaweeds, UTC clade is very well studied. The Ulvophyceae, Triboxyphyceae, and Chlorophyceae. Uh, Triboxyphyceae is a uh, it's very common in the terrestrial ecosystems you know so triboxia is a very uh, famous algae you see and triboxia is also uh, quite often found in lichens as phycobion you know so prosinophytes is another uh, ignored group not many taxonomists are working on the prosinophytes you see there is a classification of a green plant or a veridae plantae in summary so kingdom plantae comprise the terrestrial green plants, the embryophytes and the green algae which is not monophyletic group. Chlorophyta together known as viridae plantae. So the, the, the loose assemblage of green algae plus uh, the terrestrial green plant embryophytes together call it as viridae plantae. So in addition to viridae plantae, I told you that it also has called pilophyta. So that is basically a red algae, rhodophyta and glaucophyte algae, like glaucophyta inside the kingdom plantae or archiplastida. So this clade includes organisms that eons ago acquired their chloroplasts directly by engulfing the cyanobacteria. So that is how you know, the, the product of the primary endosymbiosis. So this is uh, the schema of the archiplastida classification. Chloroplastida, so that is nothing but viridae plantae, another uh, uh, synonym of viridae plantae is chloroplastida, right? So two main groups, one is chlorophyta, that is green algae, second is streptophyta, that is uh, caraphyta plus embryophyta. I told you streptophyta is a natural group, it's a clade, it's a monophyletic group, but chlorophyta is not, you know? So green algae, chlorophyta, of course, if you define chlorophyta only by UTC clade, that is Ulvophyceae, Triboxyphyceae, and Chlorophyceae, then yes, it is uh, it's a clade. But if you include Prasinophyceae, it's not a clade. Examples of Ulvophyceae is Ulva, the green, uh, the green laver, you know, it's a common uh, seaweed. Triboxyphyceae, an example is Triboxia, uh, it's a lichen phycobion. Chlorophyceae, Volvox, you know, colonial, um, uh, you know, uh, unicellular colonial algae, the Volvox, beautiful, you know, the, the globules, right? Volvox is an example of the, the Chlorophyceae. And Prasinophyceae, Osteococcus is an example of the Prasinophyceae. Coming to Streptophyta, Caraphyta, that is, Cara is an example of the Caraphyta. Right? I told you, Caraphyta is. Uh, um, um, you know, it is. It's very similar to the most recent common ancestor of all the, uh, you know, all the embryophytes. That is the land plants. Coming to the rhodophyta, it is nothing but red algae. Uh, you know, red algae, either in freshwater or in the, the marine. Right. So that is what the red algae is. 
Glaucophyta is yet another group of the Archiplastida, but it's not really well studied group. Freshwater microscopic algae, phycobilin rich. You know, the, the pigment phycobilin is quite common in uh, Glaucophyta, and most are symbiotic, they are symbionts. Examples include Glaucocystis and Cyanophora. So, this is an example of a glau glau uh, no, Glaucocystis, and uh, yes. Coming to Rhodophyta, there are mainly four classes in the Rhodophyta, red algae, Floridiophysia, Hypnia, Bangiophysia, Bangia, Compsopogonophysia, Compsopogon, and Rhodellophysia, Rhodella. All these are very important groups of the red algae. Our lab has been working on the red algae systematics for quite some time. And uh, of late, we discovered two new species of Hypnia. You know, Hypnia bullata and Hypnia indica. So, both of these uh, publications is expected in a few days now. You know, it's almost accepted in Botanica Marina. So, uh, by the time you watch this video, perhaps the, the manuscript must be accepted. It's a new species of Hypnia yeah, in Indian coastline. You know, so Hypnia is very important because it is a, a caraginophyte. It's a caraginophyte. So it's basically, uh, you know, the caraginan, kappa caraginan. You can harvest from uh, commercially if you if you can commercially cultivate the hypnia or if you can harvest from the nature. So floridiophyceae, bangiophyceae, compsopogonophyceae. See, the name is really long, right? Compsopogonophyceae and rhodophyceae are the major classes of the rhodophytes. And if you look at the uh, phylogenetics inside the archiplastida so red algae and glaucophyta together forms a clade you know so uh, a bilophyte i told you and now coming to viridae plantae so land plants and caryophycines together forms a clade you know streptophyceae but uh, the the so called green algae is not monophyletic but if you define green algae as only chlorophytes uh, yes then it forms one clade Right? So, glaucophyte uh, example of the glycophyta is glaucocystis. Red algae example is porphyra, you know, nori, the Japanese edible seaweed, very expensive. The most expensive algae in the world is porphyra, you know. By the way, porphyra is there here in India as well. I have seen porphyra in a large number of places in India, especially in South India. Uh, chlorophytes example would be chlamydomonas or chlorella. I mean, so many examples are there. Syndesmus, Caraphysian example is Cara, Cara vulgaris, and uh, Cara is a model organism, you see. And for the land plants, Osimum or whatever, all the land plants are example of this uh, embryophytes. Embryophyte is a monophyletic group. So, land plant is what the embryophytes are. It, uh, the name Embryophyta is because the embryo, the sporophytic embryo, is being nurtured during the early stages of its multicellular development within the tissues of the parent gametophyte and that is why it is called embryophyta you know almost all are photosynthetic exceptions are uh, holoparasitic plants so of course parasitic plants need not be photosynthetic but uh, other than these exceptions uh, almost all the embryophytes are photosynthetic so this is a top level classification of the embryophytes uh, as you can see, the viridae plantae, some of the earliest splitting members are chlorophyte and caraphyte. Together, you can call it as green algae. Right? Now, caraphyte plus embryophyte is called streptophyte. Yes, it's a clade. So, all these things on this side of the, the line are all clades, right? So, while, uh, you know, these highlighted ones are usually not really clade, these are non monophyletic these are polyphyletic and that is why the names usually the, the system in phylogenetic systematics is that uh, those who are paraphyletic or polyphyletic are put inside two quotation marks like green algae in, in, inside two quotation marks you see so that is how uh, the, the common practice so inside embryophyte early splitters you can see that you know moss liverworts and hornworts in earlier textbooks of this uh, uh, you know this uh, embryophyte systematic land plant systematics of botany you know the taxonomy uh, syllabus of the botany you can see that bryophyte the term bryophyte is now not used 
because these three organisms are not really related. Most liverworts and hornworts together do not form one clade, you know. And uh, then coming to the tracheophytes, so tracheophytes are the one with the vessels, you know, vasculature. So tracheophytes uh, uh, include a pteridophyte, the old name pteridophyte, which includes monileophytes and lacrophytes. Plus, you can see that euphilophytes. So euphilophyte is uh, plants with the real uh, or true leaves. So if you are saying about euphilophytes, it is basically monilophytes and spermatophytes. You know, seed-bearing plants are called spermatophytes. So now coming to spermatophytes include the so-called gymnosperm in old classification but now the term is no more used because gymnosperm together is not natural because it doesn't have uh, you know a common ancestor not shared with any other groups of plants. So gymnosperm is now uh, you know separate uh, classes like cycads, ginkgos, conifers and uh, tenophytes. All of these are separate entities. Together, you cannot call it as gymnosperm, which is not natural system, you see. But earlier gymnosperm plus current day angiosperm. These are the main groups of the spermatophytes, the seed-bearing plants. Now, angiosperm, is it natural? Yes, it is. Because all of these plants, uh, you know, which the so-called angiosperm together have uh, one common ancestor, you see. And it's also a clade. So wherever you see this kind of clade, for example here, rosid is a clade. So this is natural, you know, that is how we can infer, uh, you know, the, the phylogenetic tree. So angiosperm, some of these are early splitters, the so-called anita grade, then monocots, then magnolids, both are uh, coming on the basal side of the angiosperm tree. Then eudicots, right, core tricolpate, uh, the pollen, you see the, uh, the, the pollen has got grooves, the three grooves, so the, that is why it's called uh, tricorpate, right, eudicots. So core tricorpate is the uh, most of the plants on uh, on, uh, on the terrestrial habitats are core tricorpate, asteroids, right, and saxifragales, rosets, fabets, whitetails, malvids, uh, Mittails, all these things we will we'll see when we discuss about the vas you know the uh, vascular plants systematics, right? So yeah, that is in summary of how uh, the systematics work for uh, Viridae plantae as well as Archiplastida. Vascular plant from here onwards is the vascular plants. You know the tracheophyte is basically the vascular plants, while everything underneath the basal. Uh, groups of these plants are all non-vascular plant, right? So that is what in this course you are learning non-vascular plant systematics. So vascular plants uh, that that's uh, you know the discussion should start with uh, as you can see here uh, the pteridophyte and gymnosperm and uh, you know you can see that here angiosperms all these things we are going to cover in a, in the next course that you are going to take eventually.